Hello, I'm Fred Dynage. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. I would like to talk to you about crime and criminals and gangsters and killers. And I want to start by talking about the Cray twins, Ronnie Cray and Reggie Cray. I'd like to start by taking you back to March the 8th, 1969. The Cray twins, Ronnie and Reggie, are on trial at the Old Bailey in London. Both have been accused of murder. Ronnie for killing a gangster called George Cornell, who was with the rival Richardson gang south of the River Thames. Reggie with killing a member of his own firm, Jack the Hat McVitie. It was a long trial, more than 30 days, and then the jury were sent out to consider their verdict. They were out for four and a half hours. When they came back, the verdict was guilty. Ronnie Cray, guilty of murder. Reggie Cray, guilty of murder. The judge, Mr. Justice Melford Stevenson, looked the craze straight in the eye and said, I'm not going to waste time with you two. Society deserves a rest from your activities. I sentence you to life imprisonment, which I recommend should not be less than 30 years. Not less than 30 years. It was a sentence that shocked the Cray twins. It shocked London's underworld. It made headlines around the world. It was a very severe sentence indeed. Now that was a long time ago, 1969. Ronnie Cray died in 1995. Reggie Cray died in the year 2000. But nonetheless, even though it was a long time ago, the Cray legend lives on. The infamy lives on. They can still make newspaper headlines. There have been countless television documentaries made about them, including one that I made for Sky's Crime Channel, which has been shown and re-shown many, many times and is still very popular. There have been a lot of books written about the Cray twins, including their autobiography, which I wrote with Reggie and Ronnie, which was a bestseller at the time and now some 30 years later is still selling. People are so fascinated by them. There have been feature films made about the Cray twins, including the Kemp boys from Spandau Ballet. That was, that was a very popular film. And so too was Tom Hardy's film about the Cray twins. Always this fascination with them. And even though it was a long time, students who weren't even born when the Cray twins were alive, email me and say, we're doing the Cray twins as part of our thesis at university. Can you give us more information? If I speak at a dinner or on a cruise liner, all that people really want to hear about is the Cray Twins. So what is it about the Cray Twins? Why does the legend live on? What was their young childhood like? How did they get into trouble in the first place? Why and how did they commit murder? How did they deal with all those many, many years behind bars? How did I meet them? All these questions I hope to answer in the next few broadcasts with some stories about the Cray Twins, which you probably haven't heard before, anecdotes you haven't heard before, quotes you haven't heard before. I think, I hope it's going to be fascinating. So who were the Cray Twins? Well, Ronnie and Reggie were born in 1933 at Steen Street at Hoxton in the East End of London. Their father, also called Charlie, was a scrap metal dealer, not at home very much, because if he wasn't selling scrap metal, he was on the run from the police or the army. And when he was at home, which was, which was rare, he was generally to be found in the pub. Mum was Violet, a quite extraordinary woman. The Cray twins absolutely adored her and she adored them. She was very unhappy in Hoxton. And when the twins were six years of age, they moved to Valence Road in Bethnal Green. Again, it was a very humble terraced house with a toilet in the backyard. But somehow Violet made the twins and their older brother, also called Charlie, a happy life. She clothed them, she fed them, she looked after them, and they never ever forgot that. So, as boys in the East End of London, it was always said you'd either finish up as a boxer or a villain. There were exceptions to that. For instance, Kenny Lynch, the entertainer, was also a friend of theirs when they were young. But generally speaking, boxing was one way out of the East End, and of course, villainy was another. And the Cray twins as young boys were real fighters. I remember mad Frankie Fraser went round to their house to see their dad, Charlie, when he was home, one of those rare occasions when he was at home. He looked through the window into the backyard and he saw the Cray twins 
fighting each other really, really violently. And mad Frankie Fraser, who was no mean little wallflower himself, said it was really quite dangerous the way they were fighting with each other. And he went outside to break it up. And the twins, the Cray twins, were good boxers. They did seem to have the potential to have a professional boxing career. Reggie, indeed, was London school's boxing champion. But then, as they became teenagers, they got into more and more trouble with the law. Not major things, it was sort of fighting in the street or a little bit of thieving, but they got criminal records and that effectively ended any hopes they had of becoming professional boxers. So when they were quite young, they managed to get hold of a, a very rundown billiard hall in the East End called the Regal, and they were successful there. But it was also the base for all sorts of criminal activities, such as the protection racket, and they began to build quite a formidable gang known as the Firm. They moved into other branches, like they bought a nightclub, for instance, and suddenly the Cray twins became the men to go to in the East End of London. Celebrities were attracted by the glamour of the East End, by the glamour of the Cray twins. All sorts of celebrities, Diana Dawes, for example, used to go there on a regular basis. Big stars like George Raft, even Frank Sinatra, Barbara Windsor, of course, fighters like Billy Walker and Freddie Mills. All sorts of people were attracted by the glamour of the Cray twins. They were very successful. They were making a lot of money. Life seemed very, very good indeed. And then foolishly, both of them committed murder. Why? What made them do it? How did it happen? Who did they kill? These are the kind of things I'll be talking about in our next broadcast. And I hope very much you'll make a date to join me.